units in Elementor. Pixels, REM, EM, VH, VW, percent. What are they? Why does it matter? And which ones should you use and when? I'm gonna answer all of those in this video and I'll also tell you how I use them to get a good workflow going and to make sure my websites are responsive. So make sure you stick around to the end. First off, these are not just elementor units, they are CSS units, so they are universal. And there are always exceptions, always several ways to do something. These are just general guidelines. With that said, let's start with the unit most people are familiar with, pixels. Pixels are an absolute unit. That means that one pixel is one pixel, no matter which screen you're viewing it on. If you set your font size to 20 pixels for every device, it's going to be 20 pixels, whether someone's looking at it on a computer screen or on a phone. Obviously, this can be very useful to get things to look exactly the way you want them to. But pixel perfect website design is pretty much dead. There are just way too many screen sizes and resolutions to make sure everything looks the same on every single one of them. Trying to do that will lead to you getting frustrated at the very least. So in general, I avoid pixels, but they can actually be very useful. They come quite in handy for things like icon sizes, margins and padding. I use them for margins because I sometimes use negative margins and using pixels just makes controlling that easier because negative margins can get messy. I also use them for the width of my containers or rather the width of my whole website so I get a consistent look. Otherwise just really use them when you want something to look absolutely identical on every screen. Speaking of paddings, I now pretty much exclusively use percent for those. The way percentages work is that they are based on the size of the parent element. This is important. What that means is that the size of the parent element that your child element is in determines the actual size of the padding or margins or whichever other thing you use percent for. In Elementor, your parent element is going to be a container and your child element could be another container or an image, a text editor or any other widget, whatever you put into the parent container basically. If you have a container that is inside another container, the bigger container is its parent. And the same thing goes for widgets. If you have a heading inside a container, that container is now that heading's parent element. In practice, that means that if you have a container that is set to full width and you have another container inside that container and you give that container a padding of 10% on the left and 10% on the right, the padding is effectively going to represent 10% of the whole width. If you have a container whose width is set to a thousand pixels, so it's boxed and set to a thousand pixels, that 10% suddenly becomes equal to a hundred pixels. So I can measure this out real quick and you can see it's a hundred pixels. So if I set my parent container to 500 pixels, that 10% padding is now equal to 50 pixels. For comparison, here's a container that has the padding set to 100 pixels. No matter how large the parent container is, it stays 100 pixels, while the one with percentages changes accordingly. You can also see over here where I have the padding on the largest container set to 10% on the top and on the bottom, how it changes as I make my window smaller. The beauty of percent is that since every user has a differently sized screen, the proportions of your paddings and margins, for example, stay relative to that screen. Someone with a huge screen, a large resolution and a lot of space is going to have a bigger padding, more space, and someone with a smaller screen is going to have less space. And this makes a lot of sense when it comes to responsive web design. Users with large screens don't have everything cramped together, and those with a small screen don't have to scroll forever and see huge spaces. So I use percent for paddings most of the time. For my largest containers, I like to set my paddings at 5% on the left and 5% on the right for all devices. But I change the top and bottom. I do 10% on the top and bottom for desktop. 15% on the top and bottom for tablet and 20% on the top and bottom for mobile. Whenever I have to set the spacing between different containers, so the gap between elements in my layout over here, I usually use REM. I just like it better, but you can easily use percent as well and it will be nice and responsive. Before I get into REM or REM and the differences between REM and EM, which is the most confusing part of the video and these units in general, let's just quickly look at VH and VW. VH refers to viewport height and VW refers to viewport width. They are very easy to understand. 100 VH refers to 100% of the viewport height. So 50 VH equals 50% of the viewport's height. So 100 VW equals 100% of the viewport width. The viewport is the area in which your website can be seen. It depends on the size of your browser window and if you make that browser window smaller, the viewport also gets smaller. But the search bar and the system bar at the bottom, the bookmarks bar and basically anything that is not the area in which you can view your website, all of it is making that viewport smaller. So the viewport is not equal to the whole screen. Setting something to 100VH means its size is going to range from the top of the viewport 
to the bottom of the viewport. Setting something to 100 VW means that it's gonna go from the left edge of the viewport to the right edge of the viewport. Don't confuse this with the percentages we talked about before, those are based on the parent element. Here we are actually talking about the total height or width of the entire viewport. VH and VW come in handy when you want to make sure a section of your page takes up at least however much space you want. Let's say you want the hero section of your website to always take up the whole available space. You can just set the min height to 100 VH. And we can now even set the width of the container using VW, so you can get some pretty responsive stuff going with this. If I set it to 80, it's gonna be 80% of the viewport all of the time. But since I'm used to pixels and I prefer to get a more consistent result, I still stick to pixels for the width of my website, but VW is definitely a valid option. Now REM and EM. This can be a bit tricky to explain, but here's what you need to know to use them the most efficiently. The basic difference between them is that REM is based on the font size set in the HTML and EM is based on the font size of the parent element. Stay with me, it's pretty simple. The font size set in the HTML is by default 16 pixels. And for most of us, there is absolutely zero need to go and change this. I always keep it as is, 16 pixels is the standard value. What that means is that one REM equals 16 pixels, 2 REM equal 32 and 0.5 REM equals 8 pixels. As long as it's set to 16 in the HTML. If you set it to 10, all of a sudden 1 REM equals 10 pixels, 2 equal 20 and 0.5 equals 5. REM is what I recommend you use for your font sizes. I also often use it for padding, margins or the gap between elements. Now REM is not gonna scale up or down depending on your screen size. That is not how it works. But there are still two good reasons to use REM instead of pixels. The first is REM is more adaptable. The thing is you will likely not really notice this much because it only shows up in certain cases. Essentially it matters the most for accessibility. REM will adapt to the user's system and browser preferences. But the text will stay the same if you use pixels because it overrides those preferences. So it's not a very general benefit but it can really make a difference to those who need it and accessibility is important. The other reason and what I like most about using REM is it's easier to work with. The proportions between different sizes are easier to understand. You can work in increments of 0.125 or 0.25 instead of trying to get things pixel perfect. There's just less math involved. 5 REM is 5 times bigger than 1 REM. Just like 80 pixels is 5 times bigger than 16 pixels, but that's a whole lot more math you have to do. At least I do. And before you get used to it, you can easily just google pixels to REM conversion and get the right sizes. EM on the other hand can be much more messy. EM is based on the font size of the parent element. Because of that, it's not something I would recommend for fonts, or really in most other cases. I actually would not recommend it for anything except for two things. The most important one is line height. For line height, EM is absolutely perfect. A good general rule in design is that 150% of the font size is a good line height. Well, enter REM in pixels. For a body font of 1 REM, to get 150% line height, you have to set it to 1.5 REM. Easy enough. What about 3.5 REM? Now it's 5.25 REM for the line height. With pixels, you set the font size to 24, and now, again, we're doing math, 150% of that is 36. Multiply that by however many different fonts you set, and it's a lot of math. And I do not know about you, but I do not love unnecessary math. With EM, your line height is gonna be based off your font size. So if you set your line height to EM, you can pretty much think of it as a multiplier. 1 EM equals 100%, 1.5 EM equals 150%, 1.25 EM equals 125% and so on. So EM makes setting a proper line height much, much easier. Over here I have my font size set to REM and my line height set to REM. And you can see to get 1.5, so 150%, I have my font size at 4 REM and my line height at 6. Over here I just have my font size set to REM and I have my line height set to 1.5 EM. As soon as I go ahead and change the font size of the first one, you can see the line height gets smaller. If I make it large enough, it's gonna get squished together. And if I set the font size to something smaller, you can see that the gap gets bigger in proportion to the font. With the heading that has the line height set to EM, it doesn't matter what I do to the font size. The proportions are gonna stay the same. The line height is always gonna be 150% of the font size. I can even use pixels for this. 
It doesn't matter. It's always going to be 150% of whichever size you put over here. So that is the main advantage of using EM. You do not have to go and change the line height every time you change the font size. So I recommend you use REM for your font sizes. I usually use 1 REM or even 1.1 to 5 REM for my body font. And then for the headings, it really depends. For my line height, I always use between 1.15 and 1.5 EM. The other thing EM is good for is button padding. If you set the padding to EM, it's going to be based off the font size of the button, which means it's going to scale proportionally. Take a look at these two sets of buttons. The first has the padding set to 1 EM on every button. The second has the padding set to 15 pixels on every button. As you can see, the buttons that are using EM for padding grow and adjust with the font size. The proportions stay the exact same. The buttons that are using pixels for padding do not scale up and you would have to go ahead and change the padding for every single one of them to make sure they are scaling up right. So using EM can be a great way to make your work easier and to achieve consistency when it comes to button sizes. So let's sum everything up. I will mostly use pixels for things like image or icon sizes, margins and padding. I also use pixels to set the width of my containers to control the width of my website. I'll use percent for paddings and sometimes margins, but for paddings, definitely percentages are one of the best options in my opinion. Percentages are also great for the gap between elements in your containers. VH and VW, I generally avoid these. I control the size of different sections of my website, usually with paddings and the content. But anytime you want something to cover the whole viewport, or at least a certain amount of the viewport, such as at least 50% of the viewport, VH and VW are a good option. And you can even use VW for your containers for the content width to set the width of the website. It's a good way to approach responsiveness, but I still prefer using pixels for the width of my website and using percent or pixels for padding to control how much space there is around and between my elements. REM is what I recommend you use for font sizes. Once you get used to it, it's much simpler to work with than pixels. It's better in terms of accessibility and it can help you avoid unnecessary math. I also occasionally use REM for certain padding and the gap between elements simply because of the math aspect. EM, I would really recommend you use this for your line height. Anywhere else, there are better options, but for line height, EM is going to make everything as easy as it can be. Another instance where EM can also be very useful is for the padding of buttons. Since the padding is going to be based off the font size of the button, it works great because the padding is going to scale with the font size. If this video was helpful, check out this video next and make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Thank you for watching.